Welcome to Project Dad Life. My name is Mike. Let me show you this week's project. Over the next five days, we're gonna build this giant backyard pergola, but let me show you how it started. So I ran into one of our first issues. Pitch angle that was messed up on the... It is looking amazing. So this is the back porch before. This week we're gonna change all that with an awesome porch pergola edition. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let's get started with this week's build. To start with, we're gonna attach a two by eight ledger board on the side and the back of our current porch. This will give us a nice fixed object to measure from and reference everything else off of. We'll attach this temporarily with some three inch construction screws. I'm going to hang my tape from the top of the ledger board I just mounted to the house. So now I know from the edge of this concrete, the face of the ledger board is at least within one inch. Now we are setting our post locations and we know we have our constant. Now is the slab on the bottom of the porch. So I'm going to pull my line, set my 11 foot, and then I will make sure we're square off the side of the house right here and it will be perfect. Now we're gonna pull some string lines and we are gonna set the distance off the back of the house and the back of the porch. We know our first location for our first post, so we're gonna square everything up to that and reference the house. Next up is drilling out the holes. Fortunately, I have a neighbor that has a post hole digger attachment for his tractor. Thank you, George. So I'm just gonna go around where I marked and drill the holes about 18 to 20 inches deep, making sure that my string line is clear, finish it off by hand, remove the excess dirt, and make sure we have enough space to set our post and touch them slightly to the strings. The best way that I've found to set your post is fill the hole with four to six inches of gravel, pack it down, stain your post up, get it nice and level, and then you wanna drive two spikes into the ground, have a couple scrap pieces of board, have someone hold it level and attach those boards to the post so it stays level without the concrete. We're gonna repeat this process four times. I love securing your posts this way because you can leave these side supports on throughout the build process until you're done and it really helps let that post set up perfectly. Now I'm gonna mix in wet concrete. Always use wet concrete. Packing it in dry just does not get the concrete fully mixed up and set up correctly. Pouring it in wet allows it to get in all the voids and gaps below the post and it'll set up perfect. Stage one of the pergola is complete. The ledger board is attached to the house. Once I get my rafters marked on 16, I will add these ledger attachments. These are just a power lag bolt and they will go straight into the ledger on the house. Instead of having four corners, I'm just having the two corners on the outward side because the back of the pergola is attaching to the house. So it's kind of a hybrid situation. So the next stage is gonna be getting our beams up on the post that we concrete in the ground. And then the third stage will be getting our rafters cut, actually connecting the ledger to the post beams that we're about to hang. Our longest span right here is just over 18 feet, so we're gonna connect two boards and connect them with those little decorative two foot, two by tens I just cut. And my dad showed up to help to operate the tractor and raise the beams while I made sure they're level and attach them with some four inch wood screws temporarily. The reason I said that we are doing a hybrid pergola is I did add pitch to these. So I'm dropping them two and a half inches from where we're attached to the house. What that means is I'm putting a quarter 12 drop on the rafters. That way down the road, if we ever wanna cover this pergola with tin or a roof or anything like that, that way the water will run off. So we're wrapping around this 90 degree corner on our porch. We're going down this side of our house and then we're coming down the back side of a house. So. Like I said, it is hybrid. So what we're gonna do is I laid out a string from corner 
to corner on the back of our post and beam back there. You can see that string running. Not a framer, there is a formula for this, I know, but I got a simple degree finder and I came up with a 20, but it's also gonna have a degree and a half of angle for the pitch because the hybrid pergola, again, we're putting a drop in this. So today's goal is to get all the commons cut for the front face of the pergola and then the commons that are gonna be 90 on the side. Once I get all those tied in out of the two by eights and then we'll deal with the jacks. Hopefully these will go pretty good. So I'm gonna make my template now. Hopefully that'll fit. And if it does, then that'll be our template and we'll just mark them all out and they'll all be on 16s running down um, the face and then running down the side. So that's the plans today, let's get started. I'm gonna add some temporary two by four supports to the center of the beams, because if you bought pressure treated lumber lately, you know how heavy that stuff is until it dries out. Now I'm gonna go down the face of the beam where the raptors are sitting and measure my 16s and make sure they line up perfectly and nail them in. Now I'm gonna repeat this process on the side of the house. I'm gonna mark all the raptor locations on 16 foot centers, place them in position, lay them on the beam and toenail them in. So I ran into one of our first issues and we're doing the quarter inch 12 drop. That worked out great on the long end, but as I come around this hip rafter um, and the run is only four feet or five feet on these right here, it's a really more aggressive drop. So I don't know, I'm not really sure exactly how to fix that. I may just shin these right here, lift them up to where it looks better with the eye, but I don't know. Leave some comments below if you guys know exactly how that's supposed to be. You know, when you're running a hip and then one side, your run is way shorter than the other side. It's kind of tricky. We're really getting so close. So I got all the common rafters right above my head here tied in. Now I'm going to start on the jack rafter right here. And this is going to be the angled on 16 still and it'll go this way. I'm going to use a framing square to find that, but it is looking awesome. So this rafter above me that is going diagonal is technically called a hip. And to find the rafter locations on those, we want to maintain our 16 foot centers. So we use a framer square right here as shown, and we'll continue marking it from the last rafter we put up while marking our 16 on the hip. And I just realized where I screwed up. Remember the pitch angle that was messed up on the side rafters right here, and it was much higher pitch than I had planned for everything else. I realized what happened right here where I attached the ledger board to on this porch. My critical error was not checking that for level before I started. So what I did on the very first part of this project, I attached the ledger board to the, you know, soffit kind of face of the porch thinking that that was level. I was wrong. The builder or the framer that did the porch put about an inch and a half drop in it. So from the house, to this post right here on this board is about an inch and a half drop. So that's why it got really low, or actually the ledger attachment right here was higher on this end. So that's why it really angled the rafters. So I went back, unscrewed it, and I dropped the ledger board. I kind of split the difference because something can be level, but it might not look right to the eye. So I kind of always split the difference, step back, look at it. 
So that's what happened with that. So I just spent about an hour correcting that. I got some of these rafters still off. So I'm gonna go back and make sure everything looks good before I 100% tie all the rafters into the beams. So what we lack are the six rafters right here. I got those, I just gotta cut the angles in them, put them up there, attach them to the ledger. And then as you can see, I only have a single two by 10 right here for the beam. Uh, the reason I did that is because these are on an angle. So I just attached one beam right here, laid my rafters on, that way they lined up exactly how I wanted. When everything's done, looks good, tied in, I'll come back in with the inside beam. And that way I can just simply slide it up into place till it touches the rafters and secure everything with lag bolts and nuts and all that stuff. So rafters, we're gonna get started on those, get those popped up there, and then we'll go around and tie everything in, else in perfectly. Now I have to cut these 70 degree raptors for the back side of the hip. So the only way I figured out how to do that is to cut a new 45 piece, use that as my new fence guide, make my ninja air chops to make sure I'm cutting the right direction, lay the two by eight vertically up on the chop saw, add 25 degrees to the angle, make sure it's square and then cut halfway through, finish it off with a hand saw. Not sure if this is the correct way to do it, but it did fit perfectly. I check all my measurements, make sure they're right at 70, and then place the new rafter in position. Got your ears? Yep. Bang, bang. Guys, the trusses are finally done. As you can see above me, they're all tied in. Now we just got to double band this beam right here. So I'm going to come in, hopefully bring it with a tractor and be able to lift it up in position, fasten it in, and we will be one step closer. All right, maybe I need a clamp to keep it on the post as well. <laughs> Been a long day. I'm going to get this one beam up and then I'm going to call it quits after that. We're almost done. I'm like on day five or six uh, work day into this thing. And I got one beam right here to hang. Once I get this beam hung up, then I'll go back through and get my carriage bolts. I'll drill and bolt everything together. And then the very last thing we have to do is put a couple batten strips on the top. So the rafters stay vertical. And then on the ends right here on the 
um, the faces I'm gonna have to figure out what kind of design I want whether a radius or a 45 and a straight whatever I'll google that and find some images and then we'll get the jigsaw and we'll string these off mark them all straight and then we'll put our design cuts in it and then it will be done so man I just love doing this stuff and I'm so pumped about how this came out it's so pretty Anyway, if you haven't yet, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for a bunch more projects like this, and in a couple minutes on your end, it will be the grand reveal of this pergola. Now I'm going to set my first batten strip up top. I think it was about 6 inches from the ends of the rafters. And then I'll measure 16 inches on center, pull a chalk line, make my lines across the top of the rafters, and then run the batten strips across the top of the rafter all the way back to the house. It is looking amazing. Last thing we gotta do. So I cut a sample on the two by eight to see which one we want. So this is the nine degree and the 45. And then this was a hole drilled with a straight cut and a 45. I don't think this is gonna work out and I'm not really a huge fan of this look. Um, it's a little too intricate I think. And being that I'm cutting all these while they're attached up top, this will be super hard so we're going to go with this cut so this is going to be super easy all i'm going to do is find my shortest rafter that's uh, sticking out i'll measure from there do a chalk line and then we'll go through mark them all then go through the skill saw and cut them and then after that we just have one thing left We absolutely love how this pergola came out and it was pretty simple. A lot of heavy moving, but pretty simple. We are so excited for the next two stages of this backyard transformation. So hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this type of content. The total cost of this pergola was right around $1,100. For a detailed breakdown of that cost, look in the description below. All the information will be listed down there. As always, thank you guys and we will see you next week for another project.